Hello, hi everyone. My name is Dr. Sana Khan and today in this video we are going to cover topics like cloning vector, transformation, transduction and transfection. See, these topics are very important for your board exam as well as your NEET exam. Okay, so first let us first talk about the cloning vector. So to understand the cloning vector, first we need to understand what is exactly vector. So for that, let me explain you one example. Okay, so today you decide to go to a mall for a shopping or, you know, for having a dinner or something like that, when, wherever you want to go. So what you will do is you will be taking a taxi or a Ola or, you know, you'll be going by bus. Yes or no. So here you are taking a vector to reach to the destination. Am I right? Same way when I want the DNA to be carried to another cell. Okay, when I, mean, I want the DNA, my DNA, my DNA means the gene of interest, which I want to be replicated in the whole cell. For that, I require a vector. Okay, so what are vectors? Vectors are the DNA molecules. First point. So what are vectors? Repeat with me. Vectors are DNA molecule that carry a foreign DNA segment and replicate inside the host cell. Okay, so uh, the vector are nothing but vector are the ones which are present in one cell. So you have to remove that vector. In that vector, you have to put your gene of interest, that is your foreign DNA. And now that has to be put into the host cell. Are you getting it? So what are vectors? Vectors are the DNA molecule that carry a foreign genes, a DNA segment and replicate inside the host cell. Now coming to the main part, that is what are cloning vectors? Okay, now we know what are vectors. So let us understand what are cloning vectors. So vectors which are used for preparing recombinant DNA. So what are the cloning vectors? These are the vectors which we are using for our technology that is recombinant DNA technology, right? I hope you know what is recombinant DNA, right? So what is recombinant DNA? When the foreign DNA is inserted into the vector, right? When it is inserted into the vector, it becomes a recombinant DNA, okay? So see, this is the cloning vector. So when, but this cloning vector is nothing but a recombinant DNA when it is being put into the host cell and it is put obviously to have the multiple copies and that is called as a cloning vector, okay? So now I hope everybody is clear. So what is recombinant DNA and what is cloning vector? So what is recombinant DNA? When the vector is being joined with a passenger, with a foreign DNA, with a gene of interest, you can call anything. So it forms a new DNA that's called as recombinant DNA. And this recombinant DNA is put into the host cell for, uh, for uh, making multiple copies. So now let us understand why these cloning vectors are used. So for that, let us see the reasons. So the first thing is it is used as a vehicle as it is artificially carry foreign genetic material into another cell where it can be replicated and spread. So we are using this vector because it has that ability. Okay, it has that ability that it carries the foreign DNA and it put it into the host cell plus it helps in the multiplication, replication. So it has that ability because of which we use it. Then it is used to amplify a single molecule of DNA into many copies because our recombinant DNA has the passenger DNA, but that's a single copy, right? We need a multiple copies for which we need a cloning vectors. And cl cloning vectors are DNA molecules that are used to, to transport cloned sequence between biological host and test tube. Okay, so these are the reasons why you all use cloning vectors. And we, if there is no cloning vector, it is still possible or not. Molecular gene cloning is not possible. It's impossible. Okay, so you can be asked in your exams, like, you know, why cloning vector are used for two marks. So you can write any of the two reasons from here. So now let us understand the structure of a vector. So a vector has four important things. In fact, three important things to be more particular. The first one is called as origin of replication. What is it called? Origin of replication, which you also called as ORI. Second is the selectable marker. Third is the cloning site. 
okay so vector should have these three most important thing first is the origin of replication second is the selectable marker and third is the cloning site so now we'll be going through each and every part and try to understand but for that let us see the diagram of a cloning vector see please understand that this is not the diagram of pbr 322 because whenever i teach cloning vector students feel like okay this is not looking like pbr 322 pbr 322 we are going to do it but we are going to do it into a separate video where we'll be talking about plasmid okay okay because it's a artificially it is an artificial vector so we need to know a lot more about it so that we will be discussing in the next videos so let us first talk about the basic structure of a cloning vector what a cloning vector should have so cloning vector should have ab that is antibiotic resistant gene it should have restriction endonuclease sites plus it should have origin of replication which is also called as ori now first let us talk about the origin of replication so what is origin of replication what is the unique thing about it so first thing is it's a unique sequence of a nitrogenous base where dna starts replication the name itself suggests the uh such as the meaning that is origin of replication so means here the dna is going to start its replication so it's that sequence of dna where the dna is going to start replication and obviously for that a vector should have at least one origin of replication so that the replication process starts right so it should have at least one ori and it should control the copy number of dna by causing relaxed replication so it has to be able to control the copy number of dna is it clear very easy origin of replication is a point where the replication should start simple and easy coming to the next part that is markers now what are these ab markers ab means antibiotic resistant genes so these are for the detection of transformed cell carrying recombinant dna see try to understand that recombinant dna is a trial and error method okay so there would be certain cells which will be transformed which will be able to pick up that recombinant dna and there would be certain cells who will not be able to pick up that recombinant dna am i right am i saying correct okay so this uh, so how will you understand you cannot understand by looking no that okay this is the transformed cell and that is the non transformed cell no you cannot understand that right so for that you have this gene called as antibiotic resistant gene which helps to detect the transformed cell carrying recombinant dna so it identifies and element uh, eliminate the non transformed cells so what could be the antibiotic resistant gene over here it could be ampicillin tetracycline kanamycin or chloramphenicol which are used as a selectable marker am i getting am i right okay i hope you all are getting what am i saying okay so coming to the last part that is restriction endonuclease site so it's a multiple cloning site or the target site see uh, i think you must be knowing about palindrome if you don't know it is okay we'll be talking about in one of the sequence one of the videos what are what are palindrome sequence okay so palindrome sequences are cut by restriction enzyme for dna insertion insertion now try to understand this see this is a plasmid am i right this is a plasmid right this is a vector so i have to cut a side part of a vector right i have to cut a part of a vector i'll show you in the diagram see this is a plasmid okay so what i have to do is here in this vector i have to put my gene of interest this is my gene of interest which i need to put so for that i am going to use the restriction enzyme first to cut this vector so after you uh, after using the restriction enzyme my vector is going to cut get cut and then with the help of dna ligase enzyme i am going to stick this with the my with my gene of interest and this is how the recombinant dna gets formed so now where 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 will the cut take place the cut takes place in a specialized sequence called as palindromic sequence so restriction enzyme cuts my vector at a specific sequence called as palindromic sequence you know what are palindromic sequence see palindromic sequence are the ones when you read from left to right should be the same like malayalam right malayalam up left se right padho ya right se left karo it sequences are the same so that is called as palindromic sequence 
So vector should have, have at least one restriction site where there is a palindromic sequence present and it can cut the vector and the gene of interest can be inserted into the vector. Okay. So now insertion of cloning vector. So now recombinant DNA is being prepared. We have to insert that into the host cell. So this is the cloning vector. So when you put it into the bacterial cell, that's called as transformation. Okay, these are the terms which can be asked in your exams. So insertion of cloning vectors in bacterial cell is called as transformation. What is it called? Transformation. Insertion of cloning vector in eukaryotic cell is called as transfection. Okay, see there is a difference between transformation, transfection. So be clear. When you're using the word transformation, it means the cloning vector is inserted into the bacterial cell. When you're saying transfection means cloning vector is inserted into the eukaryotic cell. And when it is, when a viral vector, when a viral vector, okay, this is something different. We'll be talking about the different types of vector. So when a viral vector is put into the citipal host, that process is called as transduction. So insertion of viral vector into the citipal host is called as transduction. Okay, so let us see the types of vector. Quickly, so first one is the plasmid, which we are going to talk in one of the videos. It's very, 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 very important because there is a lot of things over there which you need to remember the scientist name and the, uh, and the about artificial uh, prepared plasmid and all those stuff here that we'll be talking in one of the videos. So there are different types of vectors being used in biotechnology. So that is plasmid bacteriophage where the common one is M13 lambda virus, cosmid, pegimid, bac, Yak, vacuolar viruses, transposons, mammalian artificial chromosome. See, I, I, I would like to ask you a question over here. If you know what are transposon, I want you to write it in the comment section in our app. If you write it, I'll surely answer. And if you're wrong, obviously I'm going to answer it. And we'll you will come to know about one of the important MCQ. What are transposons? Okay. So these are the various vectors which can be used for carrying out the recombinant DNA technology. But most commonly, the vector which are being used are two, that is plasmid and bacteriophage. So these are the two vectors which are commonly used in biotechnology. So let us see a few properties of cloning vector quickly. So it is it can be introduced into the host cell very easily. It can replicate in the host cell. It is independent of replication. It controls the elements like promoter, operator, ribosomal binding sites. Uh, it has restriction endonuclear site. It has a spe specific markers for antibiotic resistance. So these are the few characteristic properties of cloning vector, which we because of which we use cloning vector. Okay. So among these, plasmid is obtained uh, naturally but it is not having the characteristics which we want in our vector, okay? Where is the plasmid present? You know, na? bacteria may. Bacteria may, there is an extra chromosomal um, circular thing which is called as plasmid, but it doesn't con consist of all the characteristics which we want in our cloning vector. So therefore that we have constructed, okay? We have constructed a new uh, plasmid and the PBR322 is most widely used in DNA technology plant which has been constructed. So few other constructed plasmids are PBR320, PBR322 and PACYC177. Okay, so let us talk about PBR322. It's the most commonly used vector and it has restriction sites for the restriction enzymes like HIND3, HIND3, BAM, H1, SAL1, PVU, 2, PST1, PVU1, ECOR1, and Clay1. Very, very important. Please, you have to remember these enzyme names. I know it's difficult, but yes, it is important for your need exam. You have to remember the name of the enzymes which are there on PBR322. Okay? <clears throat> so let us see the history of PBR322. So Herbert Boyer, Kichi Itakura and Arthur Riggs in 1977 described the first vector designed for cloning purpose, which was PBR322. So it's a very small 4KB, had two ABR gene for selection and the construction of first recombinant DNA emerged from the possibility of linking a gene and coding antibiotic resistance with native plasmid of Salmonella typhorium. 
Typhi Murium, very, very important MCQ. So they can ask you that which was a bacteria which was used for uh, recombinant, forming or recombinant DNA. Okay, so that time it, the first native plasmid of Salmonella Typhi Murium was being used. Okay. So uh, Joshua Lederberg was a person who introduced the term plasmid in 1950. So as I told you, there are a few types of cloning vectors. So we are going to quickly go through it because we do not have to study in detail apart from plasmid. But yes, I have talked a little bit on plasmid. But yes, I'll be making a separate video on plasmid very soon. So plasmids are the one which are found in bacteria and few plants and animal cells. Cosmids are the plasmids with containing cos sites from viral DNA. Okay, And phage DNA is DNA from viruses that infect the bacteria. Pegemids are the plasmids containing phage DNA. And some other common cloning vectors. So bacteria, uh, if the host is bacteria, the cloning vector which is used could be plasmid, cosmid, or lambda phage. If the host is insect, you can use baculovirus. If the host is plant, you can use TI plasmid. Again, TI plasmid will be taught to you in a separate video. Please do watch that videos. And yeast for yeast, uh, you can use yeast artificial chromosome. Okay, so that's all about the cloning vector, vector and uh, the different types. I hope you have understood. So I have tried to explain you first what is vector, what is cloning vector, the structure of a cloning vector. We talk a little bit on PBR 322 and the properties of plasmid and the remaining vectors which are used in biotechnology. Okay, I have not taught you in detail about plasmid that will be taught in a separate video. So don't think that plasmid was co co uh, not co uh, covered completely. This was majorly the video on cloning vector. I hope you have understood. I'll meet you soon with the next video. Till then, bye everybody. Take care. Study hard. Exams are coming very near. So just give your 100% to get something very good. Okay, bye. Take care.